Uh, but we are going to get into some hip openers. So actually, keeping that in mind with the hip openers, um, if you normally sit in a crisscross applesauce or an easy seat, go ahead and find your way to more of a butterfly shape. So bring the soles of the feet together. And you can use a block here if you like, um, or you know, sitting up on a block or two blocks underneath your knees if you need to, or pillows or something. Um, but just come to this butterfly shape. Let your feet kind of fold open and use your hands to just kind of find a nice place of stillness here. So your hands go on your feet, maybe putting a little bit of pressure with your thumbs on the arches of the feet. That feels kind of nice. And then close your eyes. Start to work into the practice. We're going to get into the hips. So if you want to find a little bit of a flutter motion, a little butterfly flutter there, you can certainly do that. Just coming into your practice here, starting to lengthen out your breath. setting your intention for whatever it is that you aim to accomplish here in this practice. And then let's start to work into the neck. So keeping this little butterfly motion, let's start taking some neck rolls here, just gently rolling the head from one side to the other and then back. Noticing if anything feels super juicy and just kind of stopping, leaning into it if you find an area that needs a little bit of extra. Good. And then finding this with the neck. Uh, if it's in your practice today, keeping the feet pressing together, the pinky toe side so the arch is open, you can see the soles of your feet, knees are out, and then maybe bringing your elbows down along the shins so that you're creating this kind of triangle shape and melting over the legs. So that's going to put a little bit more pressure on the hips. Head's super heavy here. And if you're already really stretchy, if you're somebody that kind of has a lot of mobility in a forward fold, you can bring your forearms underneath the ankles and grab the feet from the um, kind of the tops of the feet and fold down. That's a little advanced though. So if you're not there, don't force it. Maybe by the end of class. Nice, taking two more breaths here, just letting gravity do the work slowly moving into this shape. Good, and then go ahead and roll all the way back up. Put the feet on the mat, hands come behind you to take some easy windshield wipers to the right, to the left. Now we're going to work into the hips the other way, so the outsides of the hips. So bring the right foot to the bottom and cross the left foot on, or the left leg on top, and come to this um, kind of this eagle leg situation. So you're just crossing the legs on top of each other, bringing the feet down towards the hips. And it's a bit of a, it's a little bit intense here. So we're not going to stay here too, too long because we're just warming up, but I want to get some stretching in the outer hips going. So start to walk your hands forward, fold forward. Make sure you're keeping your seat on the mat so butt doesn't float up, no matter how much it wants to. Good, and like I said, we're not taking a long time here, just a little bit. So go ahead and unravel and then flip the feet. So whichever one was on the bottom, bring the opposite one on top. And you might have to maneuver a little bit. You're trying to stack your knees kind of on top of each other or actually on top of each other. I don't quite get there because I'm really tight. And then melting down. So this feels very much like a kind of a deeper pigeon or a little bit different pigeon shape. Nice, good. And then go ahead and unravel, unwind. Let's take a few of those windshield wipers just to limber us up a little, shake it out over to the right and over to the left. 
And then finding your way onto your belly, we're going to open up the back a little bit. So hands and knees are onto your belly here, taking a few cobra rolls. So to begin with, the tops of the feet are on the mat. The hands are underneath the shoulders nice and wide, pressing to the mat and just lift just the head, heart and shoulders. So you're really, you could not use your arms. That's how little effort you're putting into this. Just create that simple back bend to begin with. And then go ahead and lower down. So now, as we start to work into it, you can add a little bit more. You can press into the mat and start to lift up if that's working for you. If this creates a lot of tension, just back out of it because it's a bit of a, an intense back bend to start. And then one more, pushing up and in, maybe coming into a full cobra, which is different than an up dog. Elbows are bent, legs are on the mat, shoulders are down. And then go ahead and lower all the way down, curl the toes under and find your way back into your child's pose here. Just for a minute. Stretch the arms long. Get a nice big stretch, come up onto the fingertips. Good, and then we're coming all the way into our tabletop shape, creating a little bit of spine movement here now that we've started to stretch. And take a few rounds of cat cow. So drop the belly, lift the tailbone, lift the heart. Head comes up last. Drop the tailbone, hollow out the belly. As if you're trying to pull your chin in towards your collarbone and your pelvic bone is coming forward too. Inhale, lift. So it's like you're squeezing the two ends together. Pull. Inhale, lift. And last one. Nice. Beautiful. All right. So keeping that right knee on the ground, the right hand comes to the mat and then just spin your foot behind the right foot behind you so that you can come into a gate shape and look up towards the sky. So this might be enough here. If you want a little bit more, you can lift that top foot. If you want a little bit more still, you're going to reach that top hand overhead. Nice. Now we're going to bring that knee all the way up and place it next to that hand that's on the mat. So up we go into a nice low lunge, reach up. So it should be your left foot forward. If it's not, that's okay. And then we're going to take our left wrist in our right hand and pull over towards the right. So we're leaning over towards the right. Back up through center, place the hands down and you're just going to slide that foot back Pick that foot up and go right back into that gate. Whoops, fall over. Reach up and into that gate shape. Perfect. Foot goes down to the mat or just off the mat and come on up into a kind of a, a standing gate. So fingers come just behind the head and lean over towards that extended leg towards the left and then lean over towards the right. So here's our gentle core work obliques and right back through center and all the way back into that tabletop shape all right here we go so we're just going to take a cat and a cow nice cat and cow and then right into that gate on the other side so zip up your belly left hand comes underneath the nose and forgive my back for a moment. We're just coming to the gate on the other side and testing it out. So maybe float that right foot, maybe extend that right hand, and then see if you can take a little bit of weight out of the hand that's holding you up, maybe even coming up onto fingertips here. So you don't want to dump down into that shoulder. Nice, we're coming into that nice low lunge. Bring that right knee forward and step next to the left hand, reach all the way up. Nice low lunge. Taking that side lean to the other side, gripping the right wrist with the left fingers and leaning over towards the side. Nice, beautiful, coming all the way back up. And then we're going to find our way back to that gate shape. Oop, here we go, reach all the way back. And then lifting up into that nice, high uh, 
I don't know, what do we call this gate, I guess. Right hand, right elbow reaches for the right hand, hands are behind the head. Left elbow reaches for the floor by the left. So you're just sliding across a wall to the right and to the left. To the right and to the left. And then we're coming all the way down into that tabletop shape, curl the toes under and push back into a child's pose actually. So you're going to push back uh, hips to heels and then sit down, just float your knees off the mat. So we're not quite all the way relaxed in this. The knees are off the mat. Curl the toes under and then lower the knees to the mat. Keep the toes curled under, stretch the arms nice and long. Melt into this shape. <laughs> Go ahead and release those toes. Give them a nice tap out. I love to work toes this time of year. <laughs> and then find your way back to that child's pose. Elbows on the mat, hands overhead. Fingers point back towards your feet. All right, we're going to keep moving. So we're going to get a little bit of arm and core work, uh, but not in the traditional sense of uh, push-ups. So what we're going to do is we're going to come to the right side or whatever side makes sense so that you can still see the screen. Left hand comes in front of you. The bottom hand, the right hand is going to wrap. So it's going to slide down your right side and grab onto your left waist. So it's like wrapping in front of you like this. This left hand is right in front of the shoulder. That makes a difference when we get going here. And then the knees, I like to keep mine slightly bent here. So what we're going to do, it's actually, it's a push-up, but it's a tricep push-up. It's very similar to when we do a chaturanga. You're going to push into the hand and lift yourself up. So this is core and arm, and then lower down and lift up. We're only going to do five of them. That's three. So I think if I had to do more than five of them, I would probably rebel. And then there's our last one. Five. Hooey. Nice. Let's take it right to the other side before we forget what we're doing there. Or I accidentally leave it out. So just switching over to the other side. You can slip if that makes sense for you, but so that you guys can see me, I'm actually swinging my legs around. Right hand is in front. Left arm goes underneath and grabs across the top of the belly. B hand on top is in front of you. Your knees are bent and you can do more. So if you like, like really like these, go ahead and do 12 of them. It's quite all right. You can do as many as you like. And then here we go. Well, I could probably do six on this side. We're just going to do five. That's two. That's three. That's four. And that's five. Beautiful. Roll all the way onto your back. Reach the arms nice and long. And again, that's a nice modified way to do a tricep push up. It doesn't mean it's work, less work. Stretch the arms nice and long. And then let's go ahead and roll our way up to standing. Find your way in a forward fold around the top-ish of your mat. So you don't have to come all the way to the top. And just bend the knees, melt over the legs. Grab an elbow in each hand, sway side to side. Beautiful. We're going to roll all the way up for our balance today. We're just going to work into the hips standing. So if you want a wall or something handy to hold on to, you probably won't need it, but maybe you will. So we're going to stand up nice and tall into our uh, mountain pose. <laughs> Sorry, my, my brain is not working today. And then we're just going to reach the right leg up. Now you can do this whole thing with your hand by your side or out against a wall, like I said, a little bit of hip mobility here. So knee is even with the hip, open out to the side, beautiful. Then spin your heel so it's coming up. It won't be parallel. So you're just kind of spinning that heel up and then draw the legs together, but that right knee is coming just behind that left and then slide them into meet, meet each other. So it's like a circle. Lift, open, spin that foot back, and draw them together. 
So if you notice me, if you're watching me, I'm wobbling all over the place because I'm watching the camera in front of me. You want to try and look down at the floor and concentrate on keeping A, this a smooth motion. Once you get the hang of it, you don't need to stop at each step. Just go around that circle. And then the other part is you want to stay nice and steady on that standing leg. And then last time, wherever you end up, we're bringing both knees together. And then if you want, you can reach back with that right hand and draw the knees towards each other and just take a nice little stretch in the front of that bent knee. Perfect. Let's try that with the other side. So uh, trust me, there's a method to my madness here today. So lift your knee up, going out again. So the, the knee is open and parallel here. And then you kick that foot back, you draw the leg behind you, this is a bar move, and then pull the knees together. And come up, out, back. You should feel your hamstring kick on there. Come back and up. So we're really getting 360 degrees of hip here. Nice. I always default to, let's do two more. I always default to a lot of forward hips because I don't like doing open hips myself, so we try. We tend not to do that too much. Good, now bring the knee together, grab onto that foot, and take that stretch. If you have the shoulder mobility, you can grab onto that foot with both hands, but again, that's not, not necessarily something you need to do to get the stretch. Beautiful. Go ahead and release. Step your left foot way out towards the left. Step your right foot way out towards the right, bend the knee, find your way into your warrior two shape. So apparently, according to a survey, this is the most popular yoga shape. Who knew? I guess that makes sense, right? So from here, you're going to, we're going to build this pose. Knee stacks over ankle, ankle lines up with arch, and then your uh, heel is one long line, zip right back up. Nice. Bring your fingertips behind the head just like we did before and draw that right elbow towards the right knee. You don't have to crunch down. We're just creating length. So instead of thinking of the crunch, think of the length and then straight back up and then the other way. So this should seem familiar. To the right, to the left, to the right and left. Last time, right left and then straight back up right elbow comes to right knee left arm reaches right up taking this right hand no left arm <laughs> taking this left arm all the way forward keep that back foot rooted down just reach forward so as you start to spin it's like you're trying to reach something on a shelf that's in front of you and then drop that hand that left hand down along the floor and then up and open so a big circle all the way up. Now your leg is feeling it. This is the last one. Beautiful. And then all the way up. Now from here, we worked open this shoulder. Your bottom hand can come down to the mat if you like. Nice. This is an extended side angle. If it feels really good, take the top arm and wrap it around the back and grab on to, see, maybe you can see my hand, just peeking out on my thigh there. Shoulder is open. If you take an arm bind and you fold forward, come back out of it because it's meant to enhance the shape. Nice, let's go ahead and release the bind if you have it. Reverse this warrior, straighten the leg. Ooh, that feels good. And let's find triangle. Hinge and reach up. Nice, like I said, there was method to my madness here today to get into these hips. And then we're just going to bring that left hand down. Right hand is on the uh, right side of the foot, left hand is on the left side of the foot, and then Slide that back foot in just about maybe a foot. So both feet are on the mat. You're going to reach this left hand over to the outside of the, the pinky toe side of the foot and then reach the right arm to your hip. So squeeze your legs together. Nice, this might be enough. Now you can, looking down at the floor is better, but if you want to test your balance, you can start to look up and then reach the right arm up towards the sky. There's the biggest daddy long legs up there. 
Nice. And then both hands come down. We're going to walk the hands all the way towards the middle. Your legs are certainly going to feel it today. Wide-legged forward fold. Maybe coming down onto your forearms here. Let the head be super heavy. Toe placement is whatever feels right for you. I like my toes to be just about parallel with the short edge of the mat. And again, if you can't reach the floor, you can keep with your Ella forearms, you can keep the hands underneath the shoulders as long as you're just melting down. And then rock back and forth, heels and toes, heels and toes. Good, one more breath. Let's take a little twist from here. Hands are underneath the shoulders. Left arm is going to reach all the way up and open, twist. Left hand comes down, right hand comes all the way up and open. And then back down. One more time to the left. Nice. One more time to the right. Perfect. Both hands come down. Now holding this forward fold, wrap your arms around behind you and let them fall towards like overhead. So I keep a little micro bend in my knees just to add a little bit of strength in my legs. You're looking straight behind you here. If this doesn't feel good or if it puts you out of balance and you don't like that, hands can stay on the mat. Good. Both hands come down. Heel toe your feet in one step, toes out, heels in, sink down, find your way to a goddess shape and we're just going to rock a little side to side. So the only thing you want to watch out for here is that you're not lowering your heart below your hips. So you want to keep the heart up higher. So if you can stay up here, this feels really nice on the knees or maybe down here, wherever you happen to be. Nice. Find stillness. Right hand comes to the right knee, left hand comes to the left knee. My favorite stretch ever, returning the shoulder in, looking up over the left shoulder, push away from that right knee. It should feel really nice at this point. And then back to the other side. All right, continuing our travels, we're going to find that warrior two other side. So left foot forward, right foot down, and windmill all the way open. Starting out with the same oblique stretch we did before, bend the elbows and then just lengthen the right side as you aim the left elbow for your left knee and then over towards the stretching out the left side as you aim right elbow for your foot. Left and right, very nice. Left and right. Last one, if you get a little dizzy, that's okay. It's kind of the point, mix things up here in the head, get all those juices flowing, shake up your world, stretching out nice and long. Left hand either comes to the um, elbow, comes to the knee, or all the way down to the mat, extended side angle. So it's entirely up to you. I'm gonna hang out a little higher here. Let's take that big circle with the arm, right arm reaches forward, you're turning your shoulders actually, so you're grabbing something off of that table. Somebody put it just out of reach. Fingers slide down all the way up and open. You don't have to move at the same pace I do. You go a little faster or a little slower. Nice. Last one. Beautiful. Hold it up. Good. Maybe now you play with this bottom hand coming down. Maybe now you play with the bind. Wrapping it around squeezing it into that hip crease, grabbing onto the thigh, and coming back into that shape. Nice, good, go ahead and release, reverse, straighten the leg, ooh, that feels amazing. And then find your way to that triangle shape, left hand down, right hand up, look up. Right hand comes down outside of the left foot, Slide that back foot in slightly if you need to, and then reach that left arm all the way up. Revolve triangle. Beautiful, both hands come down. 
Walk the hands all the way towards the middle. So taking a nice surfer's lunge, uh, I am stiff on this right knee, so I'm going to modify a little bit. We're coming over towards the left, so your left toes face the long edge of the mat. The right toes are going to come up off the mat as you sit down into this shape. So ideally, the heel comes to the mat. Doesn't work for me. Left arm is reaching out in front of the knee. Right arm reaches up. Peel those right toes off the mat. So you might have to slide that foot out and open. This is really, really, really getting into those hips. Nice. Both hands come down. Turn facing that right foot. Come onto the right toe or left foot. Right toes come out or right heel comes off the mat. And we're in a crescent facing the back of the mat. Reach up. Nice. Beautiful. Let's go ahead and come back towards center. So we're just taking that surfer to the under, other side. So we're going to come down over that right leg, peel the left leg off the mat, right hand reaches, and then come all the way up with that left hand. Nice. Both hands come down to the mat, walk towards the front and take that crescent all the way up. One more time, just for mobility. So this mimics what we do in our day to day, right? When we're reaching for things. So here we go, come all the way down. We're taking that surfer to the back, all the way up, reach up. And then find your way to that crescent at the back of the mat. Just spin and reach. One breath. Beautiful. Exhale. Hands come down to help you if you like. It looks a little different if you're not using your hands. You're just going to manipulate the feet and slide gracefully into it. Or not, depending on how you're feeling today. Beautiful. And then on your exhale, you take the transition so that when you come all the way up, you're inhaling nice and high. Whew. Beautiful. Let's go ahead and bring the hands all the way down to the mat. Step back with that right foot. Find your way to your first down dog of the day. That's been a while. Hands are about shoulder width. Head reaches towards the mat. Feet are as wide as you need them to be for your practice today. Nod your head yes, shake your head no. Maybe bending the knees, maybe pedaling them out. Whatever feels kind of amazing here. Good. We're going to keep that hip opener going. Right leg reaches up, open the hip, bend the knee, flex the foot, three-legged dog here. Step that right hand outside of, or right foot outside of the right hand, and windmill open, warrior two. Pretty functional. Beautiful. Both hands come down inside of that foot. We're coming right back into that three-legged dog. So slide that right foot off the mat, and then up and open. Both feet come to the mat, knees are nice and wide, find a child's pose. Hips to heels, sit back, head is heavy. Two breaths here. All right, find your way back to dog. Curl the toes under, lift the knees off the mat. Nice. Three-legged dog, other side, left leg opens, hip opens, bend the knee, flex the foot, and then step through, find your way, left leg comes to the outside of the left hand, right foot plants down, warrior two. Nice, relax into the shape, and then right back into it, hands come down, sweep that left foot up and open. Three-legged dog. And then we're coming into that child's pose one more time. Probably the last time for today. Sit down, hips to heels, forehead comes to the mat, hands reach around behind you. So the more you open the knees here, the more you're going to get into the hips. If that stance is not working for you today, you can bring the legs closer. 
Again, wrapping the arms around behind is really nice for the shoulders. Go ahead and roll all the way up. Beautiful. Coming to your knees, sitting on your shins, bringing hands to heart center. So your hands, your thumbs are just on your sternum there. Your fingers are pointing just all the way from you. Coming into your breath here, inhaling nice and long. And then as you exhale, release any tension, any stress, anything that kind of came up as we were working through that. Inhale, find length. If this shape creates tension, sit up on a block. Exhale, relax the shoulders. Taking those hands out to the side, push away. So nope, no negativity here. We're creating our little bubble. So bring your arms together out in front of you or your hands together out in front of you. Palms face away. And then sweep the right arm up and open. And then back through center. And then the left arm up and open and back through center. And then draw the hands back towards heart center. So that we're going to work through that for the shoulders here. Pushing away. Reaching that right arm up and out. Left arm up and out. Both hands to heart center and push them back towards the front. So now just feel it out. So whatever feels good. So maybe moving one arm and then the other. Whatever kind of feels good. Making your little bubble here. And then eventually your hands are going to find their way to behind you. Interlace the fingers and pull them back towards each other. Pull your shoulders back. Open your heart. Draw your chin down towards your collarbone. And then if it feels good, go ahead and lift your chin and drop your head back. So that resets your fight or flight. So anytime you feel yourself really kind of getting too much in your, your head, things are starting to get a little bit stressful, a little bit overwhelming, you just tuck your chin, wrap your arms around you, interlace the fingers, pull shoulders together, and then lift the head all the way up and then bring the chin back to center good go ahead and release the hands we're coming back down i'm sorry to say we have one more round of those tricep push-ups to do before we end before we uh, start to cool down so coming down onto your right side left arm is in front right arm is wrapped around you and i'm telling you your goal on these is like 10 of them a day if you could do 10 on each side you're going to have like super strong summer arms here Grab onto your side with your, your bottom hand comes up and grabs onto your side on the top. Left hand is in front, five of them, that's it. Just pressing up and lower. You're not collapsing, the arm is just touching the floor. That's three, that's four, and that's five. And then we're switching all the way over to the other side. Last set, I promise. Knees are bent, bottom arm is below you, top arm is in front, five of them. Make sure you're not cheating yourself working through them too quickly. You really want to use muscle here. So press into the mat, lift up. Nice. I go slower on this side because the side's easier. <laughs> Lowering down, lifting. It all comes from the arms. We have two more, if I counted right. Nice. That's the last one. Hooey. Wherever you're at, go ahead and roll onto your belly. Let's stretch out the shoulders. Shoulders and hips today. Right arm comes all the way out from the shoulders. So you're making a letter T with your arm. Left arm is going to help you roll back onto that arm. So this is a really great stretch. This is enough. But if you really don't feel a stretch here, you can make a cactus arm shape. So make sure you're uh, keeping those 90 degrees, right? And then you can do the same stretch with the elbow bent, but that's super intense. So do whichever one makes sense to you. So I know I've been doing a ton of work outside, yanking weeds and 
moving things. So my shoulders, my arms, my obliques, just things that you don't think of start to get sore. Good. Let's go ahead and roll to the other side, right into that shoulder stretch on the other side. Left hand reaches out, so a straight line. You want to be careful not to have the hand below the shoulder or above the shoulder. It should be straight out. And then roll on top. Using that top arm to help you. And then go ahead and release that stretch. And then however you want to get there, you can just roll over onto your back. We've totally earned a nice long shavasana today. I'm not even going to be concerned about that spider that's making his way toward me. Towards me. <laughs> Creating a bada konasana with your feet. So the soles of the feet together. The knees splay out nice and wide. Arms can be cactus overhead or even grabbing opposite elbows overhead. And that super open shape. Close your eyes. Tuck the knees. Splay out to the side. Gravity is going to do the work there. And just enjoy this nice peaceful shape for the next several minutes. You have nowhere else that you need to be. You have nothing else to do for this time. So you can give 100% of your attention to checking in with your body. Scanning up and down from toes to fingertips, to top of the head, and just noticing what there is to notice. Feel your muscles begin to let go. Feel your body begin to become heavy on the mat. Allow all the thoughts that aren't serving you to drift away from your attention. There's nothing to see here. Notice your body as it begins to become relaxed. Finding an escape from the day-to-day -day stressors. Just being on your mat.
bringing some gradual movement, maybe using the hands to pull the knees together, letting them sway from side to side or anything that feels good, maybe extending the legs out long here. Finding your way over towards your left side and pausing there. Letting your arms rest on your, your head, rest on your arms. The eyes are still closed. You don't need them just yet. Becoming 100% invested in your breath now. Notice the cadence of your breath without controlling it, without trying to change it. Keeping that awareness on your breath as you move towards your seat. Noticing the subtle changes as you begin to move about. And then settling back into that rhythm. That rhythm of natural breath where it just comes and goes, where you are essentially being breathed as you work your way towards a comfortable seat. Eventually bringing your hands to heart center, still allowing the eyes to stay closed. Bowing your head over your hands, notice what there is to notice. How do you feel in this moment? Maybe it's so awesome that you want to take it with you for the rest of your day. Thank you for joining me on the mat today. Have a fabulous rest of your day. Namaste.